myself, my experience of coming from Japan, like as an international student, I really felt like it was more like welcoming community. When you know your students, you know when they're struggling and you can support their successes. Yeah, you would have a real relation with the teachers in the classroom and, and, and the students.
are live from Sieve Ross Field on the beautiful campus of West Virginia Wesleyan College in Buckhannon, West Virginia. Thank you for joining us on Topper Station. I am Todd Allum. Alongside me, Cub Farner. We will bring you today the broadcast of the Topper's last away game in the 2019 season as they take on the West Virginia Wesleyan Bobcats. This broadcast is brought to you by Belmont Savings Bank. Undos. A special thank you to Dr. and Mrs. Clyde Campbell, Generations, and Main Street Bank. Again, thank you for joining us. I am Todd Allum alongside me, Cub Farner, usually our sideline reporter getting the day, uh, I would say in the booth, but we're outside on a little uh, landing here outside of the gym at the Rockefeller Center uh, here at uh, West Virginia Wesleyan, Seabras Field right outside of it. Uh, it's gonna be a cold one for us a little bit, could be a lot worse. Almost clear skies, don't see any rain in the forecast whatsoever. Should be a good football game this afternoon. Yeah, Todd, it, it could be like last Thursday when we were out sitting in the cold out there. At least you guys had the booth. <laughs> I was down on the field, of course. I'm just excited to be here, watch some football. I mean, just a lot of good action planned for today. Well, let's take a look at the Mountain East Conference standings and where these two teams stack up with just two weeks left in the regular season. Uh, as we take a look at these graphics or this uh, these standings, We'll have to update these. A couple games played on Thursday night. Notre Dame still 9-0. Frostburg State at 7-2. West Virginia State at 6-3. Urbana 7-3. Charleston 7-3. Glenville 5-4. Uh, Fairmont State at 4-5 uh, with the toppers at 4-5. And, and then West Virginia Wesleyan 1-8. Concord 1-9. And, and Wheeling still winless at 0-9 on the season. We go to uh, the matchup between these two teams. Take a look, we told you about the records already. And the scoring offense for the Toppers, almost 30 points per game, just 18 for the Bobcats. Uh, the Toppers pretty much very close in terms of points to give up and points they score at 30.3 points given up. Wesleyan at 37 points per game given up. The Toppers lead the way in both total offense and total defense in big time in that turnover margin on the season. The Toppers even on the season in term, terms of turnovers, uh, but Wesleyan a minus eight. That's got to hurt. That has a lot to do with that one and seven, one and eight record. Yeah, Todd, turnovers are a big factor into a football game, but you know, we talk about West Libby and four and five, and if you look at it, we have a less than a one point differential in offense and yeah. defense. And that's really, I think, what's the differential in our four and five record. Well, for West Virginia Wesleyan, a couple players to watch. Jarrett Northrup, their quarterback. He is thrown for about 52, 53% completion rate, uh, 12 touchdowns along with the 12 interceptions on the season. He's averaging uh, about 235 yards per game. Kenny Lewis, a receiver, uh, 20 receptions, 320, uh, 382 yards. 19 catches per reception, four touchdowns. There are a couple other receivers on this team that have more catches, maybe a few more yards, but uh, he's only played in six games so far this season, has Kenny Lewis, and he's put up comparable numbers to their top uh, receivers that have played every single game this season. So he's definitely a player to watch for that topper defense. And for West Liberty, players to watch for the toppers will be Quincy Wimbish. He's got three overs, almost 400 yards on the season, six touchdowns rushing. He's also got 41 yards per game, a long of 26. Isaiah Robinson, one of the players to watch for the toppers as well. 41 receptions, over 600 yards receiving, 15 yards per catch, six touchdowns as well. He's averaging 70 yards per game this season. Well, the toppers are making their way out onto the field with the black pants, white top. Uh, Wesleyan, the exact opposite, the black top, white pants. And we'll get to some of the starting lineups here for both of these teams. We begin, uh, we'll start with West Virginia Wesleyan and start with their offense. Again, uh, their quarterback, Jarrett Northrup, a 6'5 junior. And their receivers, Kenny Lewis, Derek Drapen, Danny Young, along with tight end Jonah Wellman, and running back Shaq Freeman Parks. Their offensive line, Taron Carter and Jaron Carter will bookend the offensive line at left tackle and right tackle. Then at the guards, Jake Folland, Trey Millam, and Mark Dunlap at center. Now defensively for West Virginia Wesleyan, at defensive end, they run a 3-3-5. Ridge Stokes and Amon Speed, remember that name, folks, Amon Speed, uh, for that Bobcat defense. Harry Lewis will play the nose tackle. The three linebackers, Cole Skaggs, Renard Matthews, and Grant Safford. And 
That's secondary, Ephraim Moore, DeAndre Logan, Kobe Vinegar, John Marica, and Mike Sawyer at the other cornerback position. Now for the toppers, we will see what's going to happen. There's been some talk about possibly having uh, some injured players coming back for this one. I kind of want to wait and see. We saw it in practice a little bit, but uh, possibility of some injured players coming back in this one. The offense, though, Quincy Wimbish at tailback. Uh, Rich Durbin at the H-back. Receivers Christian Rita and Isaiah Robinson. And then also tight end Thomas Cole. You cannot forget him. He's having another tremendous season. One of those players you'll have to watch out for, for sure. That offensive line for the toppers. Pedroza at left tackle. Rucker at left guard. Gardner at center. Eli at right guard. And at right tackle, Austin Todd. Uh, the topper defense will be Kenyon Felder. Cody Ryan, Cody Enrietti, and David Gilchrist on the defensive line. The linebackers, Clay McDonald and Walter Peters. And the toppers, again, another injury on the defensive side of the ball. We'll see if Logan Deere will go or not. But they will have slated in that secondary. Larry Fontalise, uh, Deary possibly, Morrison possibly, Cody Hudson as well out there, along with Ojo and Ty Holmes. Well, this game about to begin. It will be the toppers receiving this football to begin the game. And again, if the toppers could get back some of those injured players or some of the, the leaders and, and top players, both sides of the ball respectively, respectively between Zach Phillips and Logan Deary. Yeah, Todd, it's not just the fact that you got injured players, but it's your leaders on the, both sides of the football. You get your starting quarterback who goes down and your top defensive back mainly throughout the whole season. Both of the two top leaders go down, and that, I think that's the biggest harm for this team right now. We will see on to kick for West Virginia Wesleyan. It will be number 91, Michael Sussman, the 5'11", 195-pound junior kicker. Pooch this one. Durbin will let it drop behind him. Wimbish will have to quickly get on this when he does. He gets himself out of bounds. The toppers will start first and 10, just shy of the 30-yard line. And, folks, from what I can tell, it sure looks like it's going to be Phillips starting a quarterback for the toppers in this one as he's in the huddle right now. And the toppers, again, no offense to uh, you know, any, any of the backups on the team whatsoever, but when those starters get back in there, it, it's really a big boost to this team. Zach had played so well this year. Eric Taylor did a good job, especially in the end of the game against Urbana last week. But getting Zach back in there in the last couple games of the year, we'll see how they run him, see if he can play the same kind of offense he did before the injury. Phillips quickly tosses it out to Wimbish. Defense is there, but he makes one man miss, trying to make another, but he gains about a yard and a half. We'll call it second down and eight. And, Todd, you talk about bringing a guy back. You know, it's it's just how he runs the offense. Um, as you hear Coach Wiley talk a lot with you, he lets Zach run his offense. And I think with Eric coming in not having the experience, I think that's what changes up the offense a lot, and that's when this changes. Toppers go with four wide. Wimbish the single back. Play action quickly thrown out. Pass is caught, but... Nate Phillips is down. Gain of a couple more yards. We'll call it a third down and about seven. It's good to see the brothers Phillips connect there. It's got less than two games left in their careers to play together. Nate Phillips obviously younger in his sophomore season. Zach in his final season as a Hilltopper football player. Zach looking, going to have to avoid the hit, cannot do it. And the sack is made. As we said, folks, be aware of number one, Amon Speed, and he showed his speed off right there. The yeah, toppers will have to punt. That was just great pressure on the quarterback there. You got good good coverage on your on, on the run, so Phillips had no time, you know, no chance to get the ball out of his hands fast enough to keep, keep from the sack. So it'll be Austin Mayfield on to punt. Gets a good kickoff. Nate Phillips, the first man to touch the returner, but he is pushed out of bounds. The topper defense will make their way out to the field. 
And it'll be interesting to see if the topper defense will have Logan Deary come out or not because he did try to go, give it a go last week. It didn't go very long. It looks like Cody Hudson out there right now. But we'll see there's a timeout on the field. And again, uh, you know, it's a great day down here in West Virginia Wesleyan. It's nice to see the new turf. It's been here for a couple years, but it's oh, yeah, always nice to see that all these teams in the conference, they all have, uh, most of them have turf now and some good facilities. I don't think it's going to be very much longer uh, before every team in the Mountain East Conference has a field like this. And it's just good to see that the, you know, the Mountain East really is coming up in all kinds of sports, not just football or basketball. You see Acro and Tumbling, it's the only conference in the country that has a conference championship for Acro and Tumbling. It's a new sport. It's growing very quickly, but it's the only uh, conference in the whole country that has a conference tournament uh, for the sport of Acro and Tumbling, the new sport. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. The Mountain East is becoming more and more of a known commodity in terms of college sports. Yeah, the MEC is really advancing themselves in every aspect of sports and just how they run it. You know, basketball coming back to Wheeling, they – I think they're finally trying to centralize what they're doing and making it a bigger deal so a team's not wondering and having to travel everywhere, every which way. I think it's really good what they're doing for the athletics. Wesleyan starts in the pistol formation, the handoff. And stuffed by David Gilchrist. Nowhere to go. The topper defense shutting it down the middle of that defense as well. It was just... A big rat's nest, couldn't tell who was in where. The big men, you know it's going to be Cody Enrietti and Cody Ryan, definitely going to clog things up the middle. And, and you saw the two linebackers right there. They came in and filled those A-gaps pretty hard. The running back just has nowhere to go when a linebacker can fill a hole like that. Northrop in the pistol again. Looking right, fires it, pass is caught. And a catch made by number 15. That is Devin Taylor, the redshirt freshman receiver for West Virginia Wesleyan. Northrop will have trips bunch right on to his left, I'm sorry. Pass is off the hands, trying to go to Taylor again. But not so right there for the toppers. It was Pritchett, Jair Pritchett, number 25. He's a redshirt freshman as well. And they force a fourth down and seven for West Virginia Wesleyan. And it looks like they're going to go for it, but... Be aware of a possible pooch kick here. Northrop fires this one deep. Ojo is there, caught up to it, but the catch is made. And it's going to be a first down for West Virginia Wesleyan. That's just tough coverage when you get a when you get a receiver that beats you outside and you have a one safety help and he has to make a decision, it, if you get a fast receiver, that's just what Wesleyan has. They just let him run and throw the ball up to him. And that was Kenny Lewis, number 82. Player to watch for West Virginia Wesleyan. Toss this one off. That's going to go down as a forward pass. They're going to say he's down way back there where David Grillcrest made sure the man couldn't go any further. Devin Taylor again. They like to go to that redshirt freshman so far in this ball game. Yeah, but look at the defense, how they floated. They didn't bite on anything. They came right to it. And it's almost like they were expecting a play like that drawn up from the start. It's going to be a loss of nine, second and nine. Or, I'm sorry, second and 17 from the 19. Play action, fires it down the middle of the field. Taylor again, but he is hit. Still makes the catch for Brandon Morrison with the stick. And 
Morrison, a guest on Hilltopper Football Weekly a couple weeks ago. Brings up third down and 10 from the 12. Pistol again for Northrop. Looking down the middle, steps up, fires it, passes. They're going to say caught for the touchdown, and it was Cody Hudson right there. But a wonderful catch made for Wesley and the man with the touchdown reception, Derek Drapen, the 6'1 senior receiver. And that was just, that's just a receiver being strong going up and getting the football. You know, Cody's right there to make the defensive play, but he just had the hands right there and just pulled it down. Odd formation here, but they get back in, get ready to kick. Just want to see what the toppers will do. Kick is up and good. West Virginia Wesleyan takes an early 7-0 lead. 9.55 left in the first quarter. We will be right back for the Topper's next possession on Topper Station. This is where I've grown up and become a young adult. My opinion is that coming from Japan, like as an international student, I really felt like this is more like welcoming community. When you know your students, you know when they're struggling and you can support their successes. It's very easy to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your teachers when your class sizes aren't as big. West Liberty is literally my, my home away from home. As soon as I walked onto campus the very first time, I knew this was going to be the place that I was going to be for college. Welcome back. The Bobcats, an early 7-0 lead against the Toppers here on Topper Station. And the big news for the Topper offense is the fact that Zach Phillips is back after breaking his uh, injury to his left wrist. He is back after a few couple a couple of weeks, and he's wearing a cast on there, and it's obvious, but... Again, he's only got a couple games left in his topper career. You don't want to miss that as a senior, your final chance to maybe play, ever put the pads back on. You never know. Uh, I got a feeling with guys like Zach, you're going to have to cut a off before they won't go out on that football field. Especially in their senior year, Todd. It's, it's one of those things that, like you said, he might not ever get to strap the pads back on, so you're never going to want to give up. And as long as he can still physically do what he wants to do, I think he's going to be playing. Wimbish fighting to the 30-yard line and beyond. See where they spot him. And we'll mark this ball at the 31-yard line. Phillips back out there. We'll have Wimbish with him. It'll be... Take a look from our vantage point. Up top, Christian Rita, Isaiah Robinson at the bottom. Also, it's Rita in motion. Hand off to Wimbish. Austin Todd makes a good block in the backfield. But just a gain of one on first and ten, second and nine coming up. Todd, it looked like the offensive line gave him a pretty good hole there, but I think he was just a little, a second late to get there, and the defense filled the gaps on him. But I think that's really been the story of Quincy this year. He's he's really been doing really well on finding the just the little holes that he can barely fit himself through, and I think that's what's really leading to him having the success he's having this year. Toppers go with the same formation. They just put Rita on the right side instead of motioning him, in, motioning him over. Phillips low snap, fires this one out for Robinson, catches made. He's on the run, makes a couple miss. They hit each other while he gets the first down, and the toppers move up to the 43-yard line, the 44, and get a first and 10. Durbin and Cole on the right side, tight to the line of scrimmage. Rita and Robinson go up top, pistol. Wimbish takes the handoff. Almost stopped in the backfield, makes at least a little bit of something out of nothing. Got hit well into the backfield, but gains a yard. And if you were paying attention, you could tell the way Zach 
Phillips has to hand that football off with his right hand, regardless of which side the run is going to. It's kind of a backhanded handoff for Zach on that one. That might be the most awkward part of this for him, playing with an injured left wrist. Yeah, it's it's just going to be difficult for him to make that, and that's the only thing that could worry a lot of people is in case that's not as uh, smooth as the other, you know, his regular way. But I think he's going to find a way to get through that. Play action, Phillips. Fires this one down the field. Can Cole get to it? No, but nobody else can either. That will bring up third down and nine from the 45-yard line, just under eight minutes left to play in this first quarter. Todd, I think on that play you can see Zach still trying not to get hit too much. Before that broken wrist, he might have stayed in that pocket and taken a little bit of hit to hit, hit a receiver. I think he's just got to ease himself into this before he gets uh, as confident as usual. Topper stick with that same formation. Phillips looking left, fires it down the seam. Robinson with the catch. Could he go to the 10? Crossing the field to the 5, to the pylon. Touchdown, Toppers. And that's exactly what I said. He's got, he had time there. He didn't have to rush anything. And with a playmaker like Isaiah Robinson, you just let him get a little bit. You give him a yard, and he's going to take it all the way. And you see how he reads the field, and he takes it across because he knows nobody's going to catch him across the field. Owen Roseant's on to tie this ball game up. If he can make this extra point. The kick is up. Good and into the scaffolding where team filmers are for West Virginia Wesley and tie ball game here seven apiece with 7.44 left to play in the first quarter. Three drives have been had, two for the Toppers, one for Wesleyan, two scores already on the board. We will be right back on Topper Station. I chose to stay in the area because I grew up just 45 minutes away from West Liberty. And uh, when the opportunities presented themselves with this healthcare management and how great the school is and baseball and everything that came into play, I couldn't surpass it. It was awesome. And uh, the school itself, everything here is amazing. Professors are setting us up for success. There's always something to do up here. I've been here for a few years now, and, and the feeling's surreal every day. You couldn't ask for much more. Welcome back. We are in beautiful Buckhannon, West Virginia. That's where West Virginia Wesleyan College is. An enrollment of 1,449 students founded in 1890. The team name, Upcats. And... You know, coming down here, driving down downtown Buckhannon, some of the beautiful buildings they have down here just uh, kind of takes you back in time, but not necessarily in a bad way, and just the beauty especially. Maybe we're here a little bit too late for all these and the foliage, the change of colors, but we still get to see some of it, and it's still just a beautiful area of West Virginia down here. I love coming down here, just the, the view, everything. Also, one of our uh, former... Channel 14, uh, I guess the new new topper station, but uh, the old West Liberty TV employee, uh, Jared Thompson, one of his favorite restaurants, CJ Maggie's down here. It's a very, very good restaurant. One of our favorite places to go, and we have time to down here in Buckhannon. I don't know if we'll have time to tonight, Cubby. We might get on the road and find someplace else to eat after this is over, but we'll see. You know, at this view, you talk about the view coming down here, but it, it really does take you back in time. You see the old... It's almost like an old style looking place and it's, it's just beautiful to look at when you're driving through. Ball is bobbled on the return, but he gets it back. Finds some room and the tackle is made by Billiter. That will spot them at the 30 yard line. That's where Wesleyan will start first and 10. The topper defense back out there, see what they can do again. Wesleyan one for one so far in their drives. They got a touchdown. Topper defense, they're a prideful group. And you've seen them when other teams have good drives, you know, a couple times. Sure enough, they come back and have a good drive themselves and want to make things better. They're the type of team that can. You saw it last week against Urbana. Pass caught in the middle again. The redshirt freshman, first down for West Virginia Wesleyan. And boy. The Bobcats really enjoy going to this Devin Taylor. Yeah, for, for what it seems right now, he looks like he's, he's a playmaker and he's going to be a guy we got to watch out for all day. 
but like you brought up with the defense, they, they really are a prideful group. A lot of leadership from top to bottom, especially in that secondary. It's such a veteran group. In that secondary, it's going to be kind of difficult not to continue to play as hard as those guys do. Play action. Again, Devin Taylor crossing the field. He is very close to another first down. And they will give it to him first and 10 again for the Bobcats. That gets the crowd here at Seabrass Field pretty excited. The handoff up the middle. It's two yards before he's brought down. Ball was loose. The officials say that he was down. We'll see if they have a conference or not about it because now there are two officials that say he was down. I thought there might have been a couple saying, hang on a second, but this is not good. Clay McDonald, number 44 for the topper defense, a linebacker down on the play. He's at least sitting up, and hopefully it's just one of those things. He was hit very hard in the shin in this cold weather, and it's just kind of a stinger on the shin. He's starting to get back up on his own. It looks like he's grabbing his arm, but he was, he was right in the middle of that. He's the one who initiated the contact, I think. Like you said, they just... They're having a lot of group tackles. It's hard to see. But I saw Clay in the middle of all that, and I think that's when stuff like this could happen. Well, hopefully he'll be okay. He's another huge piece of this topper offense. Or, I'm sorry, topper defense. And it does look like an upper body right arm. He's able to get off the field under his own power. Coach Wiley out there to make sure he's all right. He's one of those guys the topper defense needs big time. He's a, he's a big-time leader, especially in that linebacker core. He knows what to do. He's calling out most of the defense, most of the game, and he's he's a huge asset to the, the topper defense. So in to replace him, be Woodrow Hughes. Pistol formation for Wesleyan. Second down and seven. 6.15 left in the first, tied at seven. Ball gets snapped over his head, wasn't paying attention, and the ball is still loose, but somehow Freeman Parks gets on top of it. What a huge, huge mistake for West Virginia Wesley. The topper defense will have to try to take advantage of this. Yeah, Todd, that's one of those things that if the toppers hop on top of that football, that, that already changes the whole momentum of this game real early. And I think now with this big stop, they get a long third down. This is going to change the momentum, I think, a little bit. And you saw Northrop not even looking at the center, looking towards the sideline or one of his receivers. The snap went just right past him. Northrop looking. Looks like a screen pass. It will be up the middle. Morrison there for the tackle. And he makes it along with Cody Hudson. And that is nowhere near close enough on third and 28. But Wesleyan, besides kickoffs, does not like to kick. You don't see him punt very often. Here comes the punt team. And you saw that the offense looked like they're ready to stay on the football field. And that, it's one of those things that sometimes you got to take a chance. I don't know about this early, but there's times you really got to take a chance and just try to keep your momentum up. On to kick Jake Stafford, the sophomore, number 23. Kick toppers almost got a hand on it, but the kick was a low. Drops and gets to the 20 as they try to fan it further down the field. They'll spot this at the 19-yard line. And toppers will take over first and 10 with 4.33 left in the first quarter. It'll be their third drive of the ball game. Topper defense stands tall with the help of the Wesleyan miscue. Yeah, and, and you look at that punt, I don't think he got all of it. But I think it's because you look at the pressure the toppers bring on a punt, they're really strong on special teams on that. In that aspect, they like to bring a lot of pressure to a punter. And you see he was rushed on that. He probably didn't get all of it. And it helps field position sometimes. So the topper offense back out there. Phillips back in at quarterback. Kyle Ritz lined up to his left. Wimbish right behind him in the pistol. Wimbish 
Gets hit in the backfield, but it takes a few more players to bring him down. That'll be a loss of two. It'll bring up second down and 12. Again, just you look at him handing that football off to that side. I think he's – they got to make sure they get that ball secure, and I think that's what's slowing Quincy down a little bit to not hit the holes when they're open. Durbin in along with Cole. He is in for Ritz. They'll do to two tight ends set with Rita and Robinson at the bottom of the screen. Phillips looking, fires this one, caught. Rita. There you go. It's a few yards. It'll bring up third down and eight. And one of the players for West Virginia Wesleyan, the helmet came off, so he will be forced to come out of the game just for a play. That's Grant Safford. A 5'11 sophomore linebacker from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Yeah, and I see a lot of guys don't like that rule, but it's a safety hazard, and I think it's a good decision the NCAA implemented a few years back. It's to make sure there's no helmet malfunctions that another guy gets hurt for a concussion, stuff like that. Wesleyan blitzing. Phillips fires this one, caught by Durbin. He's got some power. But can't keep the legs churning. Good job by the Wesleyan defense to make sure Ridge could not get his legs moving because once they do, he's almost like juggernaut. You're not going to stop him. He's a powerful guy. He just, you saw there, he just lowers his shoulder and keeps his legs churning, and he just, he does everything he can to get more yardage. Just a yard shy of the first down, so it's fourth and one from the 28. Toppers will have to punt. Mayfield gets a good boot off on this one, and it hits. It goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's where Wesleyan will take over again, first and 10 from the 30. Still 7-7. 233 left to play in the opening quarter. Honestly, Todd, I think besides that first the, you know, that early touchdown by Wesleyan, this has been a really strong defensive game. Both teams are just shutting down at the line of scrimmage. I think that's what's keeping it such a low score right now. I think a lot of it has to do with the defensive line of both teams. Uh, both teams are very good. Again, uh, Wesleyan runs that 3-3-5 defense that a lot of people in the state of West Virginia will remember from the Mountaineers playing a 3-3-5 defense. But the defensive line for the Toppers has been strong all season long. Northrup gets the ball stripped away, and it's recovered by West Virginia Wesley and almost gets it back to the Toppers. But there we go. We talk about that defensive line making plays. That was Jack Davis in on the strip. It's just one of those things. You got pressure, and your, def your defensive backs give you the coverage for your your linemen to just get enough time to get in there and make something happen, and that's huge for the toppers. Davis, a linebacker, moved down to defensive end. A la linebacker last year moved to defensive end to get some more speed on that defensive line. And boy, has that worked out this year. It really has. Zach Hot almost got the fumble recovery for the toppers. This time up the middle, tackle will be made. So be Kenyon, I'm sorry, Brendan Nichols, number 95, big number 95, making the tackle on that one. Brendan Nichols, one of those scary guys on the defensive line for the toppers, a big guy that can move. He has definitely got some agility to him. And he's he, just the agility. He's he's fast off that ball. He can run. He's just one of those dangerous people that you don't want to line up in front of. Third and 12 from the 28. Four wide. Northrop fumbles the snap again. He'll just fall on top of it. That brings up fourth and forever. And West Virginia Wesleyan will punt again. That's, it's not a total miscue. I think the center's just guys line up in front of him. If you see on long third downs, Coach Monterosa on the defensive coordinator likes to bring in a faster group and a more secondary. And I think that's what freaks out their offensive line a little bit. They need to get off that ball faster to prevent, prevent a sack. Well, I'm not going to say anything against the guys from Wesleyan because I would be very scared of the guys for the West, for, for the West Liberty uh, defensive line as well. Toppers block this one, get a hand on it. It hits at the 30. Toppers will just let it roll. No matter what, they're going to start this drive in Wesleyan territory. Not sure who got the hand on it. There were at least four toppers around the kick. And boy, what a job Coach Hill and that special teams does again. And like I said, it I, I told you they bring a lot of pressure, but this time they had even more guys there. It's it, I think Coach Hill just 
he knows the send guys and what the situation to do it is. And it's a tre tremendous job by the special teams. So first and 10 for the toppers from the Wesleyan 46. It will be Rita and Robinson at the top of the screen. And both Cole and Durbin tight to the line of opposite sides of each other on each side. And Wimbish to the right of Phillips, a quarterback. Phillips looking quickly, throws to the left. It's Rita, tries to make a man miss after the catch. No yards after the catch, but it's a good gain.